Hey, Fredgens, what's up? It's a cross between friends and legends. That work? Giveaway time. We are giving away two editions of the incoming expansion, Dragonflight. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how to enter. Today, I wanted to give you a look inside one of the new dungeons coming in Dragonflight, Ruby Life Pools. Now, do note, these are not dungeon guides. I will, of course, do them upon release, but right now, I just want to give you a brief look at the dungeon, the lore going on inside the dungeon from my expert lore knowledge, give you my first impressions around the layout, the mobs, the design, the bosses, and hopefully get you excited for what's to come. This magnificent, opulent, tremendous, stupendous, gargantuan bedazzlement and sensual ravishment of your eyeballs of a dungeon, you will fight armies of primal forces and some proto-dragons who chose the blue pill and hate the dragon aspects instead of deciding to back the dragons that ate... Wait, what? What have I written here? Instead, deciding to back the dragon that ate everyone called Galakron, who is basically the Agent Smith of the dragon world. The purpose behind this dungeon is to defend the Ruby Life Shrine against the Primalists who are trying to steal eggs from the Life Shrine to juice with elemental power. So let's talk about the trash that you'll encounter. The first area gave me this super cathedral uh, of eternal night vibes as you run into this large hallway type space with mobs scattered out that can easily be accidentally pulled and there is these large dangerous elemental things and over pulling here will easily result in a wipe in higher dungeon levels. This is a very short dungeon, so the trash in the bottom section of the dungeon is basically clumped into all one place, with the top dungeon area forming a four point checkoff to activate the second boss, which you then run straight into the third boss. So, big ticks on that side of things. The bosses, short dungeon, but decent impact bosses. And what I mean by that is the first and third boss are absolutely amazing. Second boss for me, bit of a fizzer. The first boss you'll encounter is Maldrissa Chillworm. Now, visually, I thought this was an amazing fight from Blizzard. Really nice ice blast effects that pulse out of her uh, ability called Chillstorm. And this will be one of those fights that actually catches a lot of players off guard as an opening boss in a short dungeon. Maldrissa will summon whelps to assist her, and these whelps will apply a primal chill buff. And at five stacks, you will get frozen. It is very easy to get frozen if people don't kill the whelps. Visually, this fight is amazing. Mechanically, I think it's really cool. Big, big thumbs up for a first boss. The second boss, Kakob. Kakob! Blaze Hoof. Our old mate here and her fire lieutenants are here to steal eggs, and tuning is obviously going to play a part in, in, in how enjoyable this boss is. For the moment, it just seems to be lacking a bit, though. There's a tank mechanic to deal with, which is a four strike combo. She'll summon an elemental fire ad that shoots fire out at people. And when the fire ad's health is depleted, it leaves a large AOE zone that you have to run out of. She'll also do a slam and a large fire boulder will roll away. And that's kind of about it. Final boss is amazing though. And I got real Warlord Zalia vibes from UBRS in doing this fight. So the final boss is Kairaka and Urquhart Stormvane. Now, Karaka is a badass dragon that starts off in the air and breathes fire in random directions across the platform. When either boss reaches half health, Urquhart will jump on Karaka and you will fight them both. Urquhart has a tank buster called Storm Slam, while Karaka throws you a stacking fire ignite debuff, which goes on players, and that debuff leaves a fire zone on the ground. If you come into contact with that fire zone, the debuff will go back on you or onto you. You will also explode for damage if you come within five yards of another player when you have the debuff on. So this is really cool. Karaka, while this is all going on, will also be breathing fire in random directions and there will be winds that blow you across the platform towards the boss and towards the fire pools. Honestly, this is an amazing fight. It looks spectacular. It goes along with the dungeon. This is going to be a really spicy encounter on high tyrannical keys, I think. So all in all, it's a gorgeous looking dungeon. It has a very unique feel to it in its travel with the three different layers as you progress from the ground to the top and then the edge of the platform space for the final encounter. The first and last boss are absolute standouts in my mind. The second boss on mythic difficulty might very well grow on me as there's some added layers to mechanics. But overall, when you're looking at a three boss dungeon, having two out of the three being real standouts is a real big win for Blizzard, I think. I like that this is a blaster through dungeon style, like more of souls. 
Um, it's nice to have a sprint dungeon back in the pool. And I think people are going to have a lot of fun blasting through the gorgeous Ruby life pools. Legends, I am giving away two copies of Dragonflight. It is only available to NA and Oceanic users, unfortunately. No EU gifters. Uh, one winner is going to be picked from the comments section on YouTube. And the other one is going to be given away via Discord. So to give yourself the best chance, make sure you comment on the videos. Make sure you come and jump in the Discord. So that's it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. See you, fam.